Hello and welcome to episode 37 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we'll be talking about the right scale 2018 State of Cloud report found that 81% of enterprises have a multi-cloud strategy with respondents estimating that they are wasting 30% of spend a year and make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips for cloud computing costs to go to the next level. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here and this is a, a, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Yeah, excellent. And so a nice opening question would be, does the cost of cloud computing always have to be cheaper than as is? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, really, this has to be the, the value that it brings to the business is what we need to calculate. And so if you, you, you get kind of bogged down into dollars and cents around your as is state, and your 2B state with cloud and your ops costs and your training costs and things like that. You're kind of missing the bigger picture. I mean, ultimately, this is about transforming your business, be able to do things better and faster, leveraging DevOps, leveraging um, automation and and, uh, and IoT and uh, machine learning and some of the other kind of enabling technologies that will take your business to the next level. So I, I always get a little uh, concerned when businesses are really kind of focusing more on ops costs because it's going to be too short-sighted in terms of the direction where they're taking their company to the point where if it's just ops costs you're looking to save, I could probably save them 20 to 30 percent. But, you know, considering the risk in doing that and the time it's going to take to make that happen, uh, that may, may still not be cost effective for them if those are really kind of the core metrics that they're looking to leverage. And I think that's the reason a lot of the Global 2000 companies didn't move toward cloud in the last, uh, you know, say five years ago. But they have started in the last two years because they see the business strategy of advantages that are coming with the cloud, the ability to kind of change on the dime and leverage technology they typically couldn't afford. However, to get into the layers of the value and to get into the cost controls you're looking for, a couple core things are gonna be needed. Number one, you know, create cost governance within these systems. I mean, people have no idea how much they're spending on cloud until they get their Amazon bill or their Microsoft bill or their Google bill. In the end of the month, it should be an ongoing monitoring situation where you're placing limits on use of resources and basically allocating the use of resources to budgets. And so you have showbacks and chargebacks. So you're doing the right thing from an accounting perspective, very much like we did with real hardware and software that ran in the data centers over time. And also leverage those to renegotiate and leverage cheaper resources where you can be reserved instances in Amazon web services and things like that, where you're um, you know, buying for things ahead of time. And, um, and there's real discounts to be made there. And also in many instances, people have a tendency to kind of overbuild their virtual servers. And so they're designing something that has too, too much memory for what their needs are, too, many, too much disk space, too much storage allocated, bigger databases than they need, different types of databases than they need. So be realistic about how you're using this stuff. Um, and then ultimately, this should be about the value it's bringing to the business. And this is a board level decision, your ability to kind of look at what occurred between the as is state, the to be state, and what advantages or basically efficiencies have been brought by the utilization of cloud computing. And you can estimate that by looking at removing the inefficiencies now and then figuring out what advantages the business is going to have for that. In many instances, you could have a small, medium, large, and extra large kind of value created where the banks are typically going to have extra large value based on the utilization of technology such as cloud computing, where a manufacturing firm, a paper mill in the middle of, you know, Midwest United States may have a small advantage that occurs. And so you have to adjust that accordingly. So maybe they shouldn't move all their workloads into the cloud because the, the opportunity for creating value just isn't there based on the needs of the business, where the majority of Global 2000, you know, folks should. So this becomes a very complicated answer. And it's also unique to the particular problem domains that you're looking at. There's no one size you know, fits all solution. And this is, you know, kind of frustrating to people I think that are out there trying to do the business cases for cloud, but you got to figure out how this works for you. And I think all businesses are going to be unique. It really is one of those things that not every, there's not one size that fits all, as you just said, absolutely. And I mean, it's important that there's a pricing that can be not only predictable, but that's linked to a unit of value. 
uh, and, and providing that transparency as well. I think that's really important for an organisation. In fact, it was Keith Pearson, who's the IT CIO of the Lloyds Banking Group, he actually asked some fundamental questions behind you know, what we're kind of talking about today. And I think it's really raised some very interesting points that you've covered a few bits of right now as well. That it's that who owns it and what attributes it has and how secure is it and, and the resilience and also cost. And I think it's it's just... It's beyond me that, that people don't ask these questions, but I mean, they are the fund that underpin the, the funding or the, the whole process of rolling out a cloud computing process. But also, I mean, with so many problems with governance, etc., and HIPAA and, and all the other things going on at the moment with, uh, with GDPR, you know, how are you going to be fined if you're not compliant? So there's so many, there's so many, like you said, it's such a, a complex topic that we're uncovering here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's uh, questions that are probably not being addressed because clouds on demand as a service to the utility system. And so we're very sensitive about paying a million dollars for a, you know, an exadata service from a server from Oracle and, and you know, um, a couple more million dollars of Oracle licensees that we have to basically have an owie moment as we write the check, you know, for the next couple of years and, and leveraging this technology in the data center space. Um, and probably not as sensitive about, you know, leveraging stuff that's on demand very much like electric bills that come in every month. And even though we can add up a bill, you know, that can be higher than some of the on-premise technology that we have if we're not careful in making that happen. And I think we are going to see some people, uh, some companies probably in 2019, 2020, you know, they're going to have, uh, I guess, a very formal corporate hissy fit if, you know, they're getting these large bills when they were they were, thought they were promised you know, lower prices in cloud. And, you know, the, my, my guidance to them is that those bills should be no surprise to you. You know, you should have figured those out two years ahead of time in terms of your consumption, what they cost, things like that, governance in place, all those sorts of things. Have a cloud business office that's uh, enabled to kind of look at the, uh, the, the financial information of cloud. But it's going to happen. It's happened with PCs and LANs, use of the internet, things like that. And it's just going to happen with cloud. We just have a tendency to be very reactionary in the corporate world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it moves us on nicely to your top three tips this week, Dave. So what are your top three tips for cloud computing cost? Yeah, I mean, it what kind of talking points that we just discussed. Number one, be realistic about what the cloud will cost you ongoing. And that's that's something that I don't think people are. I mean, I ask the question all the time. I said, do you have a, an understanding as to what resources you're going to leverage, how much they cost, who's going to leverage them, how they're controlled, what limits they're going to be set, how it's allocated budgetary-wise to the divisions in the company, and how it gets up to the investors and how there's corporate responsibility for those charges very much like the other things out there. And I, I kind of get a look um, like we don't know that. And I think they're not taking steps to make that happen. And I hate to be the designated buzzkill, but that's going to that's going to really kill it, make it successful or not moving forward if the cost effectiveness is going to be there. That's the metric that's going to be judged. You could have you know great technology in place and doing some great, amazing things. But you got to be able to prove the value. You got to be able to limit the cost. You got to be able to figure out how much things are going to run. And the thing is, have a good understanding of the value metrics that come back into the business. In other words, are you able to get more agility out of it? Time compressed time to market. Well, what does that mean to the value of the company? Is the stock going up? You know, twenty percent. You know, uh, adjusted for the market, and uh, you know, versus ten percent that has gone up in the last five years. And those things really need to be understood. So, put cost governance controls in. Um, Cloud Health, we had uh, the CTO on the show here, and you know, I recommend those guys as well as um, you know, Cloud Cruiser, and there's a bunch of other folks out there that build this technology that's really, I think, is an absolute must to have. And so you can't, get, you can't get away without it. I guess that's why maybe Cloud Health is doing so well these days is because people realize that this cost governance technology is not optional. It has to happen. And then finally, keep the vendors on a short leash. Um, we have a tendency to love to negotiate with the enterprise vendors on enterprise license agreements and getting, you know, 50% discounts, things like that. The public cloud providers are notoriously difficult to negotiate with uh, in terms of uh, uh, discounts, cost reduction, um, but they're willing to listen to, um, to you in terms of, um, you know, what your needs are and what, how you can pay and ways in which you can start reducing costs and also we you know, talked about multi-cloud in the last show, you know, leverage multi-cloud computing so we play one against the other. It's like, hey, cloud, cloud one, uh, cloud two is really to sell me uh, object storage for 75% of what you're selling it for, and they're using SSD, which is your physical storage. So you know, why don't I pick that? Well, we'll step up and make that happen. And so those sorts of things can occur, and you just have to be very uh, adamant that if you're, someone's working with the vendors all the time, making sure we're, we're aware of what the costs are, 
uh, we're aware when they raise prices and reduce prices, things like that, and we're managing them accordingly. Yeah, great top three tips there, Dave. Uh, really, really thankful of those. Thank you. And yeah, I think it was episode 19, actually, uh, that we did with um, the CTO of Cloud Health Technologies, Joe Kinsella. Uh, he was great, actually. We covered some great topics on that show. So uh, yeah, if you're watching this now and you want to skip back, then scroll back and episode 19, well, it's a few times, <laughs> a few shows back now, isn't it? Um, you know, it's worth checking out because Joe was great. He's the founder and CTO of uh, Cloud, Cloud Health Technologies. And we covered some great topics. So, yeah, no, look, those, those uh, tips were great there, Dave. Thanks for that. My pleasure. And thanks for being on the C-Suite Show this week. Always a pleasure. Oh, it's always a pleasure being here. <laughs> and thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite Show. And remember, you can find Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. And remember to like, subscribe, and comment on the shows because, I mean, it's really important. We spend a lot of time and effort putting these things together, and it would be great to get some feedback. So below in the description box, feel free to comment. Uh, and also, if you're going to subscribe, make sure you click the notification bell, and that way you'll stay up to date with the latest shows that are coming out each week. So thanks for watching and until next week.